studio. Welcome. Thank you. Fantastic. So tell us a little bit about that track we just heard. Yeah, so that song I released uh, in September last year and um, uh, it's just a song that I've had in my mind for a long time and finally got to record it um, with uh, Luke Bertoz um, in his studio in Coogee. He's re recorded some great bands like Dappled City's Fly and a few others. And uh, I really wanted to combine the electronic with real instruments um, to build a very narrative based building into a climax sort of song. Yeah. Excellent. Wonderful, wonderful. It sounds um, quite, um, I guess, sort of complex and, and those sorts of things. What was mm. sort of the inspiration in, I guess, the creation of the music, or maybe even the writing of the music? Yeah, it's it's basically about overcoming fears and um, overcoming self-doubt, really. So I wanted it to be uh, a journey. There's a video clip out at the moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> People either love it or hate it. It's got um, it's a very Bjork inspired sort of video clip. It's a bit unusual, and uh, the whole idea is that you are overcoming, um, you know, inner demons or fears to um, to arrive at a better place. And so, yeah, check out the video clip. Let me know what you think. <laughs> Excellent, wonderful. Um, and with the instrumentation, there's mm. um, a little bit of a mix thing going on there. What was the inspiration behind all of that? The mixing or the instruments? Oh yeah, the sounds. I mean, the sounds in the in the recording. Yeah, so I, I love, I've always loved soundtrack music. So I've loved, um, you know, I always imagine big scenes in movies. And um, and when I was when I was younger, I loved watching uh, shows that had a really, you know, me not meaningful, but um, uh, emotional uh, soundtracks. And so, uh, and I'm also really interested in storytelling. So I wanted the, the music and the instruments to build to a climax. So it actually has that narrative, narrative element to go from being insecure at the beginning to, um, a sort of a realization and a revelation by the end of, um, you know, a sense of peace with who you've become and the choices you've made. Excellent. So you, yeah. would you describe yourself as a conceptual writer in that sort of respect? Uh, definitely. Um, I love using metaphors and similes and, and personification in my writing um, with songs and, and um, but also very emotional. I like telling telling a story, definitely. Fantastic. Yeah. So do you describe yourself as, as a folk artist, an indie artist? How, do, how does that sort of um, come together for you? So that's a great question. Um, I... I like a lot of different styles and in, in one way that's been a bit of a challenge to be, to, to say, am I pop? Am I acoustic? Am I jazz? Am I electronic? Um, so I, I don't know what genre I really am, to be honest. It's actually quite hard to, to pinhole me. I'm not, I'm not doing it in a way like, oh, I just can't be like, you know, pigeonholed, but it has been a struggle because I love having all of those elements where there is um, jazz and acoustic, but also a bit poppy as well. Um, so yeah, that's how I'd probably, like so I always think of artists that I like to sort of emulate, which is a bit of Portishead, uh, mixed with Lana Del Rey, a um, bit of Billie Eilish, I love her at the moment. She's very popular as obviously, um, Radiohead, and, uh, but also Nora Jones. Like I love Nora Jones and I love the jazz uh, influences as well, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Mm. So what sort of performances have you been doing? Um, because this was released last year, wasn't it? Yeah, so I did a, a big single launch at the Vanguard in September. And since then, I've been playing at Lazy Bones. Uh, um, I did a, a few gigs at um, 1933 Booze House recently. I've got a very big gig coming up on um, Friday the 24th of January, which I'm donating all the funds uh, to go to RFS. Um, and wires. So uh, I've just been feeling so, like everybody, so depressed by what's been happening. So that's a really big gig at Foundry 616. I'm a bit of a regular there. It's a lovely jazz venue. And uh, so it'd be great to come along and support a good cause. Excellent, excellent. So you've performed at Foundry a few times? Oh, yes, yes, many times. Um, excellent. It's one of my favourite venues in the city. It's in Ultimo. Fantastic. Like original music, jazz? Would... Original music. We always throw in a few covers. People like to, you know, sing along. Uh, but we always change the covers to suit our style. So I would never want to call us, you know, ever doing a, being a covers band or anything like that. But we add in a few covers that we tend to adapt uh, to suit our jazzy acoustic pop vibe. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Very good. So do you have like a core band that you work with? Uh, I do. I do. I've got, um, yeah, so the main instruments are um, keys, bass, drums, um, 
and yeah, acoustic guitar and electric guitar. That and depending on where we play, sometimes it's a, a an acoustic duo, sometimes it's a bigger, the full band. But it's pretty versatile depending on the venue and yeah. Excellent. So, who are the musicians who usually um, are involved? Uh, so I've got this fantastic keyboard player called George and um, Justin on guitar, but he also plays drums depending on what's needed. Um, and they're, they're sort of like the core. And then I have a few other musicians that can come in depending on where we're playing and what's needed. Mm. Excellent. Wonderful. Do you find that it's a collaborative approach to, to that sort of aspect or do you find yourself sort of directing the ensemble? How does it work in that sort of capacity? Look, they're, they're my songs. They're... And, but I, I love people's opinions and people's input. Uh, it's not a dictatorship and uh, I'm not going to tell a bass player how to play bass. I might say this is the mood I'm going for or, or and I might sort of direct how, how I'd like the song to sound. But I, I'm always encouraging them to bring their own ideas to the table. So it's a bit more of a collaborative effort. Excellent. Mm. Wonderful, wonderful. So you, you mentioned that you've got quite a variety of influences, and I yeah. think that's very prevalent, I mean, in, in the single itself. Mm. So what sort of um, background do you have as a musician, and what sort of led you to where you are now? Well, I've been singing forever. Um, you know, <laughs> my mum says I was singing when I was two, but... Uh, yeah, I've I've been singing and I've been being in bands and, you know, in high school and doing a cappella and choir. And then since leaving high school, I was in a duo and then um, and then I started just writing my own songs and um, performing as a as a solo singer songwriter. Mm. Excellent. And that's just sort of been the case since. Yeah, pretty much. Fantastic. Has there been uh, other releases that you put out previously? Uh, yeah. So I've got, so the last album I did was called, um, or is called Chasing Sparks. And I recorded that with Sean Kerry. He's the, uh, he was in Thirsty Merc and uh, recorded that with him. And then prior to that, I recorded my first album called Botany Street, uh, dedicated to where I grew up. And I uh, recorded that one at Abbey Road um, just because I love the Beatles and um, you know, my mum used to always sing the Beatles to me when I was a child. So it was a lifelong dream to go to there to record. So yeah, I've released two, um, two full studio albums and at the moment I'm releasing singles. Um, yeah. Excellent. So you went over to London and, and yeah, excellent. How did, how did you find the experience? <laughs> so amazing. It was just so good. Uh, as I say, it was a lifelong dream of mine to, to go there and to actually go into those studios that have so much musical history and walk down those halls with all those amazing posters and soundtracks that have been recorded there um, was just inspiring. Yeah. Excellent. Wonderful. Mm. Well, we've had a little bit of a um, jam just before um, we got on air and um, you're going to sing a little uh, jazz standard for us. I would love to. Excellent. So what are we, what are we going to be playing? So I think we can play uh, Nearness of You. I mentioned that Nora Jones is a favourite of mine and uh, so I thought we could do um, one of the songs that she has performed before. Fantastic. Mm. Um, so here's Lucy Burke and myself having a bit of a jam on the wonderful track, uh, Newness of You. Uh, this is, of course, New Australia Radio. This is all new Australian music. It's not the pale moon that excites me that thrills and delights me oh no it's just the nearness of you it isn't your sweet conversation that brings this sensation oh no it's just the nearness of you I 
need no soft lights to enchant me if you will only grant me the right to hold me ever so tight and to feel of you excellent <laughs> <Wonderful. Yay. laughs>